everybody. It's Deb from Dandy Art Gallery. Today I have a 14 by 18 inch canvas and I'm going to be doing a floating flip cup and I may be um, using my palette knife to make some smears. I got my inspiration from a collaboration that Sarah Mack and Gail Burston just did together. So I do want to give them credit for this inspiration. So let's go over my paints. My base coat is going to be a combination of Amsterdam Titanium White and Porage Posse Paint, the Snow White Iridescent Pearl. I just wanted to give that white a little bit of bling, so that's why I'm using that Iridescent Pearl. The balance of my paints are all um, Modern Masters, and the first one is Rose Quartz. Very pretty color. My next one is Venetian Blue. My next color is Green Apple. And my last color is their Ruby. My pouring medium today is seven parts of the mix to one part paint. And I did thin my uh, paints for this type of a pour and let me show you that just leaves a trace and disappears pretty fast okay one thing I want to talk about is I'm going to give three hints today uh, for new acrylic pours I think this is an, an imp these tips are important so three important tips First of all, a long time ago, a subscriber asked me, how do you choose your colors? And I told her, my easiest way is I find what the what I want as my primary color on that painting. So today, being that it's close to Valentine's Day, I picked red, the ruby, as my primary color. And then I pick out jars and bottles and tubes of paint that I think will complement this red I'll take some away, I'll add some until I get what I think is um, a good uh, set of colors here. So as you can see, going from light to dark, I have the white, the pink, the red, the green, and the blue. I always try and have a light color and a dark color because it's going to catch the eye on the painting. And so you can use a color wheel to pick your uh, paints out and what's good about the color wheel it'll tell you what paints to avoid putting right next to each other if you're going to do a flip cup like I'm going to do today I don't want to layer my red and my green right next to each other because that may give me mud that doesn't mean I can't use that those two colors in the same painting but that is why I decided to add a cup of white. I'm going to put white in between those two colors in my cup if I do layer them next to each other. Okay, and the next hint is um, consistency. No matter what paint you're using, and you can use all different brands of paint, um, some can be uh, very thin and some can be very thick. You always wanna add enough either pouring medium or water, liquid of some type to get the same consistency through all of your paints. That's very important because you don't want some paints to just sink, some to just lay on the top of your cup before you pour. And if you use the same brand of paints, like I pretty much am using today, the Modern Masters, like four out of my five paints, are the modern masters it's a little bit easier to mix up so if you're a beginner pourer um, that's a good way to do it is buy maybe buy all the same brand paints or similar paints in uh, viscosity and then you'll know how to mix them okay another clue is if you buy jar paints and you um, do a pouring and the next time you go to use it you sit you think wow I can't remember how that really turned out what color that was I just put a little dot on the top of my jars and that'll show me after I've mixed it up what that color is the last hint I'm going to give you is how much paint do I need 
So here's an example. This is an, a canvas that's a 14 by 18. So I just, I just divide, or excuse me, I just times the 14 by 18 and that'll give me 252. Then I divide that by 28 and that gives me nine. So I need nine ounces of paint to cover this canvas here today. So if I, in and some other things that you have to remember is this is a second level Michaels canvas, so it doesn't have the thick sides. If you buy a level three uh, Michaels canvas, or if you buy a very expensive canvas, a lot of times they have the inch, inch and a half edges. And so I would add ounces to your base coat colors to make sure you cover your edges if that's your goal. Okay, so that was just the, the width times the length and um, divide by 28 and that will give you how many ounces you need. Another thing to remember is if do you want a thick coat of your base coat or just a thin? So if you wanted a real thick coat, I would maybe go up an ounce on that also. So those are three quick hints for you if you're a beginner pourer. And what I'm gonna do is turn the camera off. I'm going to put my base coat down. I'm gonna layer my cup and then I'll bring you back and we'll start painting. Okay, everybody, I'm back. I've put my uh, white base coat down. I filled my cup. Let me show you my cup here. And where I did put um, green, the green color down, I added a layer of white just to protect from not getting the red and the green together. So, and these hint, the hints that I did give you in the beginning of the video, I will list those in my description so you don't have to worry about remembering them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, um, Flip my cup, this area, and what I'm going to do is add a little bit more of my base coat white around my cup here just to help it move. And I'm also going to poke a hole in my cup and that will allow that paint to slide to the bottom faster. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to slide my cup along here and let some of the paint out now and then. And move it all over the canvas wherever I'd like. It's almost called burping your cup. And I did get a lot of paint in this area. What I'm going to do is just kind of help it along a little bit here. Okay. I think I will give it a quick torch. going to do just a little bit of tipping and actually I would like to leave some negative space here today if I can and that's another thing about when you're figuring out how much paint you're going to need for your canvas if you plan on leaving quite a bit of negative space, then you don't need the total am amount of your paint you're pouring on as you did your base coat because you're going to leave some of your canvas uncovered. And I hope that does make sense. Okay, 
okay, I'm just gonna take a look at it here a minute. And I am going to use my palette knife here just to do a few little smears. Add a little bit for the eye to look at here. And I do like that. That's really nice. And I brought some of that ruby up there. I think what I'm going to do is just tip this way a little bit. Tip some of that paint off down there. And then I'm going to bring that back. And I may tip down here, just to tip some more of that paint off. And bring that back. working on the composition of this piece now. I'm going to take a look at it here. Just going to do a little bit more smearing here. And that is a term that Gail Burston had made up. I will link their um, the name, their name in my description if you'd like to check out Sarah Mack and Gail Burston. Gail Burston is Life in Splatters. And I believe Sarah Mack is just Sarah Mack, but don't quote me on that. But I will list their names. This is really beautiful in here where I'm tipping it. And I'm going to try and tip down this way maybe. Like I've said in previous vid videos, that the more I tip the mix, or the more I stretch out my paint that I've mixed with the mix, the more effects I get. And it's just beautiful. Okay. And I'm going to bring that back a little bit. And take another look at it. Maybe do some more smearing here a little bit. Very, very pretty. And I'll try and run something up this way. Very nice. I think I'll give that another try. I'm just going to tip down this way a little bit, and I apologize for you not seeing this. Okay, I'm just going to take a look at it here, 
and I do like everything except I think this looks a little bit plain. So what I'm going to do is I have a little bit of paint left and I think I'll just pour a little cup here and I'll pour right over that and see what I get. I do have some of my white left. Okay. So I think I will just do a pour here. And I will fix my center here, this little ring pour. And I will do some tipping now, see if that adds anything. And tip it down a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. Tip it this way. And bring it back. And I'm going to take another look at it. And I think I will try and do some schmears here again. I'm going to try and tip it back this way a little bit. And possibly down a little bit here. Being mindful when you tip that you're not losing something that you really like on your painting. And I think I can afford to tip a little bit down this way. Okay, and then bring it back. And then I'll take another look at it. I am liking this a lot. Just give it a few more here. Okay, okay, I'm really liking that. I 
And I think I may just tip a little bit more down this way. Just to get it the way I want it. Okay, and then I'm bringing it back. And just down a little bit here. Okay, now I'm going to take another look at it. I'm really, really loving this area here. So pretty. I think I'm just going to run this through here a couple more times. Just really, really pretty. And just a little bit of tip here. And I do like how I, I was able to keep some of the white lines through this painting. Okay, I'm going to give it a torch. Just cleaning off the bottoms here with my finger a little bit. I'm going to give it a torch and then we'll get you down for a close-up. Okay, everybody, here we are for our close-up. And off camera, what I did, and I'll explain that first, is I added a few more lines up in this upper uh, right-hand corner where I had done that circle pour and uh, the ring pour. And then I did stretch it out a little bit. So here is the upper left-hand corner, and this is the um, effects that you get with the mix. As you can see there, it's like a clouded, a cloudy effect underneath that white there. I just think that's so beautiful that the mix can do that. And we're just going down the left-hand side here. Some really pretty areas. This is the lower left-hand corner. And I will take you up the middle. Pretty in here, a lot going on. Not a lot of that light green showed up, but just here and there, spots of it did, which is nice. Pretty in here. We'll take you over to the upper right-hand corner. Left a little bit of negative space. Some of that green did show through there. See how vivid these lines are. I really like that effect and how the ruby ran through there like that. And we're coming upon the lower right hand corner. Very pretty in here. Again, you can see the effects that the mix gives here. All the different layers you can see. It's very shiny. I don't think that my camera is picking up all the shine, but when it's dry, I'll be curious to see how it turns out. So let me know what you think of this video. Give me a thumbs up if you like it. Make sure you share it. Ring the bell, choose all so you know the next time that I do post a new video. 
Subscribe if you haven't. That would be great. Help my channel grow. And until next time, take care, everybody. Bye for now.